Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel from Evelyn and Peter and today I have a really fun, cozy crochet cardigan pattern for you guys. So let me just get right into it and show you what it looks like. So this is the snow cap cardigan. I'll try it on so you guys can see. It's beginner friendly, oversized. It has kind of like a boxy um, shape to it. So here it is. Um, it's very beginner friendly. You do not need to know much in terms of like shaping and stuff like that. I used very simple shapes um, and simple stitches. So if you're a beginner, I think you can do this as well um, as long as you follow along with the video. The written pattern is available free on my blog, enpcrochet.com. If you prefer the printed PDF, I have that on Etsy and Ravelry as well. So you can find it there and I'll link to that all below in the description. Um, but you will need Lion Brand Homespun Thick and Quick. So when you're getting your yarn, make sure you pick out the Thick and Quick and not just the regular Homespun. This one is a super bulky weight of six and you can go to my blog and check the exact yardage because all of them use a different amount, amount of um, yardage and skeins depending on the size that you're making. So this pattern is available in extra small through 5X. So you'll need a few of these depending on what size. Um, and then you're also going to need a P16 or 11.5 millimeter hook. These you should be able to find at any craft store. A lot of the times they come in a set with like one of these bigger hooks and they usually come in pairs like that. Um, so you'll need that. And then you're also just going to need just the basic um, yarn needle so you can weave in your ends. But this is the pattern. There's not really much you need to know about it besides working with homespun yarn. If you haven't worked with that before, you'll want to Make sure that you are not pulling your stitches tightly. It can be a little bit difficult sometimes to work with this yarn if you've never used it before or if you are a um, beginner beginner, but I sized up the hook for the pattern so it's a larger hook for it. Um, and you'll see when I'm doing the stitches in the video that um, you'll want to feel your stitches instead of seeing, trying to see the stitches, you'll want to use your fingers and kind of count the stitches that way because sometimes they can get a little lost within the fuzzy yarn, but this is a very forgiving yarn. So if you make a mistake, it's completely fine as long as you go back and if you're counting the correct amount of stitches for your panel, you'll be good. You can add one, take one away if you see you how, if you're like one off. It's very, very forgiving yarn. So nobody will see your mistakes, which is good. But that's really it for this pattern. I hope you guys like it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or you can always email me. I'll have that in the description as well. But thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so I can keep bringing you guys free video tutorials. So to get started, you will need Lion Brand Homespun Thick and Quick yarn. Make sure it's thick and quick and not just regular homespun. This one is a super bulky six weight. And the specific yardage you can find in my written pattern on my blog. And then you're also going to need a P hook, which is a 11.5 millimeters. So we're just going to begin with a slip knot. So go ahead and wrap the yarn around your fingers and then pull the yarn through. And then you can just insert your hook and pull tight to secure. And now we're going to be starting with our chain. So depending on the size that you make, you need to follow along with the pattern. I will be making a size small, so I'm going to be chaining 41. So just yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through. And just do this for as many times as the pattern calls for. If you're making a size small like me, then just chain 41.
Okay, and once you make your starting chain, now we will begin row one. So you can see the very first chain that is closest to our hook, we're going to skip it and work our first half double crochet into that second chain. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and that's one half double crochet stitch. And you're just going to do this in each chain across. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And this yarn can be a little bit tricky to see where your chains are. It gets easier the further you get along in the pattern and the more rows you have, it's easier to see the stitches. But in the beginning, I recommend feeling the stitches with your fingers and you can feel where the hole is for this chain. So just work slowly and put one half double crochet into each chain. This yarn is also very forgiving, so if you make a mistake or you accidentally skip one chain and put two in the next or something small like that, it's fine. Just double check at the end of the row, make sure that your stitch count is correct. If you are following along with the written pattern, your stitch count will be in parentheses at the end of the row. So I'm making a size small and at the end of this row I should have a total of 40 half double crochet. So just continue on and work one stitch per chain until the very last chain. Okay, and now I have completed row one. So you can see I have 40 half double crochet. And what I recommend doing before moving on is double check your stitch count. So you can see that I am able to insert my finger in between every single stitch and I recommend doing that to check your stitch count. So you can feel like each little stitch and then there'll be a small gap in between. So just double check and make sure you have the correct stitch count before you move on. Um, and here on out, your, your stitch count will not change for this back panel. So go ahead and chain one and then turn your work. And to continue with the back panel, you'll just be putting one half double crochet stitch into each stitch across. So you can see the very first half double crochet stitch. Again, feel it with your fingers. And at this point, it's a little bit easier to feel than it is with the chains. So then just yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through all three. And that's one half double crochet. And just do this in every single stitch across, making sure that you're using your fingers to feel your stitch. So at the end of this row, your stitch count will still be the same. So I'll still have 40 half double crochet. And the rest of the sizes are all written down. Extra small should have 38. Medium should have 42. Large should have 44. So just make sure your stitch count stays the same throughout this whole back panel. There'll be no increasing and no decreasing. And when you get to the end of row two, just yarn over, insert your hook into that last stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Make sure you're not missing that last stitch. It can be sometimes hard to spot. So just double check, make sure you're not skipping it. And then again, you can just chain one and then turn your work. And then that last row that we just did is what we are going to be doing for the rest of the back panel. So I'm making a size small, so I'll be making 24 rows total. So just repeat row two for as many rows as the pattern calls for. Okay, so now my back panel is complete and I have made a total of 24 rows. And once you get to the end of the um, back panel and you work your last stitch, you can just go ahead and um, yarn over, pull through, and then cut your yarn and pull it all the way through to tie off. And then you can go ahead and set your back panel aside and we will now be making the front panels. So 
So you can just go ahead and grab your yarn and we're going to be starting off the same exact way as we did with the back panel. So you can just take your yarn and then again make a slip knot. So wrap your yarn around your fingers and then just pull the yarn through. And then insert your hook and pull it tight to secure. So the front panels are exactly the same, they're just going to be smaller. So you can see the width of our back panel. All we are doing is subtracting six from that back panel stitch count and then dividing that by two and that gives us the number for the front panel. Your back panel also should look oversized. This is an oversized cardigan so it may look a little bit wide to you but that is exactly how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a little bit loose and baggy. So again, to begin the front panel, after you make your slip knot, we're just going to start off with our chains. So I'm making a size small, so I will be chaining 18. So just go ahead and yarn over and pull through and make your chain length. And then doing the same thing as before, we're going to skip that first chain closest to our hook and then yarn over, insert our hook into the second chain from our hook and work a half double crochet. And then again, yarn over, insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and just work one half double crochet into each chain across. And at the end of this row, you should have a total of 17 half double crochet if you are making a small. Basically, you should have one less than your chain. So if you chain 17, you should have 16 half double crochet. If you chain 19 for a medium, you should have 18 half double crochet. So just do this all the way across the row. Okay, so that completes row one. And then again, same thing that you did on your back panel. I recommend checking your stitches with your fingers and just making sure you have the correct amount so that you can have the correct amount throughout the entire front panel. And then just chain one and turn your work. And then you can just work one half double crochet into each stitch across. So again, your stitch count will not change. You should have the same stitches throughout this whole front panel, and you will also be working the same amount of rows that you did on the back panel. So just chain one, one half double crochet in each stitch across, turn your work, and work at the same length as your back panel. Okay, so now I'm coming up to the very end of my front panel, and then you can just yarn over and pull through. And then this time you'll want to make sure that you pull enough yarn to use the tail to sew your front panel to your back panel. So just go ahead and pull a nice long length of yarn and you're going to be using this yarn when you sew um, the shoulders to the back panel. So just make sure you pull enough and then you can just pull it through that last yarn over to tie off. And then we'll be using this when you seam your panels together. You're going to need to do this on both front panels. So make sure you cut enough yarn on both of your front panel pieces to sew the top shoulder seams. So after you're done with your first front panel, go ahead and repeat that same process and make a second front panel. Okay, so now we're going to be seaming our two front panels to our back panel. So you need to lay your back panel out in front of you and you're going to lay it right side up. And in this pattern, I have row one as our right side. So when you're looking at it, your um, the right side of your row one should be facing up. And then you're just going to be taking your front panels and laying them down right side down. So the right sides of your front panels will be facing the right side of your back panel. So you just want to go ahead and line it up and you can start with either one. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that both of them have the right sides facing together. So 
So now you can either use a yarn needle and sew your panels across. I'm going to go ahead and use my hook in the tail of my yarn. So I'm just inserting my hook into that very first stitch on the front panel and that very first stitch on the back panel. And then just yarn over and pull through those stitches and the loop on your hook. And then insert your hook into the second stitch on both panels, yarn over and just pull through both panels and the loop on your hook. And then find your third stitch on both panels, insert your hook, yarn over and pull all the way through. And we're just slip stitching across. So you want to make sure that you don't skip any stitches on your panels. So stitch one and stitch one on both panels and then stitch two and stitch two. So just make sure that it lines up stitches one, two, three, four, five, however many are at the top of your um, front panel is how many slip stitches you'll be making. So I'm making a size small and my front panel has 17 half double crochet at the top of the last row. So I'll be making 17 slip stitches. And so the seven, first 17 stitches of your back panel and then the 17 stitches of your front panel is what you will be joining together. So just slip stitch across, make sure you're not pulling too tightly. And then just make sure you're not skipping any stitches so that it's not um, even. So you just want to make sure that everything comes out even and you're not skipping any stitches. And if you're using a yarn needle, you can do this the exact same way. You can just thread the yarn through your yarn needle. And a lot of people like to do mattress stitch, so you can do that. Or if you already have a preferred method, and then just slip stitch across on your first shoulder. And then we'll be repeating the same process again on our second shoulder. So after you're done with this one and you work all the way across, you can go ahead and get your second front panel and do the same thing. And make sure when you're bringing in your second panel that again you lay it down right side or the correct side facing the right side of the back panel so that when we turn it correct side out, um, the seam will be on the inside of your cardigan. And once you've slip stitched all the way across, you're just going to do one last yarn over, pull through, and then just pull that tail of yarn all the way through. Hopefully you have enough left over and that you didn't run out. And then we're just gonna do the same thing over here. So take your second front panel, Lay it on top of your back panel, right sides facing, and then again, do the same exact thing as you did on the other side, either using your hook or the yarn needle, and then just slip stitch all the way across. Um, if you're doing an extra small, you should have 16 stitches, small, 17, medium, 18, large, 19, and so on. Remember, all of these are in my written pattern if you want to double check your stitch count. And then just really quick, I also wanted to point out that on one of the panels, the tail of yarn that you're using will be on the inside of the um, panel. On the left side, you can see here, that's the tail I'm using. So you'll want to um, count your stitches across on the back panel because you're not lining up it up on the outside like you were before because the right sides are facing. So just go ahead and count your stitches in. Make sure you're counting um, the correct amount for your size. And then you can just place a stitch marker or you can just go ahead and start seaming. Just make sure that you are lined up. So I have 17 stitches on the back and I am inserting it on the first stitch of the front panel. Okay, so now we have the front panels sewn to our back panel and now we will be creating the sleeves. And to do that, we're just going to be joining our yarn and working the sleeves in rows in one big panel before folding and seaming together. So this is where our sleeves are gonna be and we need to measure out the um, armhole depth or the width of our sleeve. So you're gonna need a measuring tape and then what you wanna do is make sure that the shoulder seam that we just made is directly in the center of our sleeve panel. So the shoulder seam should be 
exactly in the middle of the stitches that we're going to be making for our sleeve panel. So just be aware of that. Um, and depending on the size that you're making, it will tell you how many inches down you want to go. I'm going to be um, having eight inches from my shoulder seam down the back panel and then eight inches from the shoulder seam to and across the front panel. So I'll have a total of 16 inches for um, my sleeve width. And right here, I recommend taking a stitch marker and placing it after you measure off the eight inches, eight and a half inches, nine inches, whatever it is for your size. I recommend um, placing your stitch marker so you don't lose your spot. I don't think I did it when I was making my sleeve, but it is definitely a lot easier. So if you want to go ahead and do that, um, and you should have the equal amount of length on both the front and back panel. So the eight inches that I measured is just half the length. And then I also want eight inches here on the other side as well. And the shoulder seam will be directly in the middle of the sleeve panel. So you can go ahead and make a slip knot and then just insert your hook and we'll be joining our yarn to start that first row of the sleeve panel. And after you've placed your stitch markers, you can also go ahead and double check your row count if you want as well, just to make sure that it is 100% even. Um, you can just see how many rows from your shoulder seam down the back panel you have and how many rows from the shoulder seam down the front panel that you have, just to make sure that it is exact. And then go ahead and insert your hook to where you measured and you should be inserting yours where your stitch marker is. And then now we will start on the first row. Okay, so once you have your hook inserted, we're gonna go ahead and start and you can just um, join with a slip stitch so yarn over and then pull through and then pull through the loop on your hook and then just chain one and then in that same spot work one half double crochet and then move over a little bit and work a second half double crochet and it's really not too important where you're inserting your hook for this row one it can be a little bit confusing because you don't actually have a stitch that you're working into because we are working into the sides of the rows right now so it might take a couple tries but you can pull it back out if it's not um, coming out even because you want to make sure that with your stitch count here that you're doing half on the first side and then when you reach the shoulder seam you should be finishing the other half so I'm making a size small and that means I have 24 half double crochet stitches that I'll be working across for row one um, for total. So I will want to make sure that I have 12 half double crochet stitches made before I reach the shoulder seam. So you might have to play around with it a little bit. If you notice that you're putting them too close together, you can pull them out and kind of separate them a little bit. Um, if you notice that you go over or under, you'll just have to pull out and um, redo it. So you can see here that I have 12 half double crochet and now I've reached the shoulder seam. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with another 12 half double crochet and spreading them out evenly and you should be um, having a stitch marker on the other side as well so you can just go ahead and continue working your stitches and you can know that that's where you need to stop. Um, I didn't place my stitch markers but it is definitely a smart idea to do if you are a beginner or if you're not familiar with um, how many inches you need to go. So definitely place a stitch marker and then you can just work the like I'm doing now. I should have done that in the beginning to show you guys um, but yeah, so you can just work your full amount of stitches and just make sure you get in all of those stitches before you reach that stitch marker. And again, this yarn is really forgiving, so it's really not too important where you're putting the stitches as long as you end this row with the correct amount of half double crochet that you should be ending up with, then you will be good to go for the next row.
Okay, so I'm coming up on my last couple of stitches here for row one of my sleeve. And after you get all your stitches made, if you want to just double check and make sure that your stitch count is correct and that your um, first row is even, this is the most important row of the sleeve just because we don't want it, the sweater to fit lopsided or anything like that. So you can just double check and make sure you have half your stitches on one side of the seam and half on the other. You can fold over and you can see mine's pretty even. So after you check, we can go ahead and start row two. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove the stitch marker because we don't need it anymore. And to start row two, you'll want to chain one. So I've already made my chain one. And then you're just going to turn your work. And now we're just going to be working back down the row. So find that first stitch and then make a half double crochet into it and then a half double crochet into the second and then you're just going to be working one half double crochet into each stitch all the way across so your stitch count will stay the same. So my stitch count will stay with 24 half double crochet. And once you reach the end of the row, we're going to do the same thing. So chain one and turn your work. And then again, you can just work one half double crochet stitch into each stitch across all the way across the row. And you're going to repeat this for a total of six rows. So this is row three and you'll want to do row four, row five and row six doing the exact same thing. Okay, so now we're starting row seven and we're going to be working a decrease. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two of those loops, yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through all four loops on your hook. And that is decreasing two half double crochet into one. So we've just made one decrease. And now for the rest of the row, you're just going to work one half double crochet into each stitch across. So work your half double crochet two together for the first two, and then work one stitch in each across till you reach these last two stitches. And then we're going to decrease again. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, insert your hook into the following stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all four, and that's decreasing the last two stitches into one. So now we have two less stitches than we did for the previous rows. So we went from having 24 half double crochet to 22 half double crochet for a size small. So that was our first decrease row. And then for rows eight and nine, you can just chain one, turn your work, and then work one stitch in each across. So no decreasing for this row. Just work your normal stitches across and then chain one, turn your work, and work your normal stitches across for row nine as well. And now we're on row 10, and this is another decrease row. So you are just repeating row seven, which was the previous decrease row. So just work a half double crochet two together for the first two stitches like I just did. And then you can just work one half double crochet stitch and two all the stitches across until you come up to those last two stitches of the row. So just work one stitch in each across and when you reach the last two you will decrease again. So work your half double crochet two together to complete row 10 and again you'll have two less stitches than before so I'll end this row with 20 half double crochet. Okay so I'm just coming up on the last two stitches and I'm just going to work my half double crochet two together. So just decreasing those last two stitches and again I'll have 20 half double crochet at the end of this row and this is row 10. And then when you complete your row just chain one, turn your work and then you need to work two more rows of just working the half double crochet stitches. So no decreases for the next two rows. 
So I've just finished rows 11 and 12, and it's just normal um, rows, no decreases. And this one starts row 13. So for this one, we will be doing a decrease for the first two stitches. So just half double crochet two together for those first two. And then you can just work one half double crochet into each stitch across until you reach the last two stitches. And again, when you reach the last two stitches, just decrease them together. So we're going to work our half double crochet two together. And then at the end of this row, my stitch count will be 18. So you should have two less stitches. And then just chain one, turn your work. I have 18 half double crochet. If and then you're making a size small, you should be working four more rows of just half double crochet stitches. So no more decreasing. Just work four more rows of working one half double crochet in each stitch across the row, chaining one and turning. So for a total of 17 rows. Okay, so now we finished our first sleeve and make sure that you are following along with the written pattern because some of the sizes are slightly different and will have more rows and more decreases. But I am finished with my sleeve and if you want to pause right now and you can go back in this video and redo that whole exact same process on the opposite side, I already have both sleeves done. Um, but if you want, you can either seam it up now like I'm going to show you or you can stop and finish the second sleeve before seaming, which is what I recommend doing. But once you have both sleeves made, now we're just going to be sewing the sides together. So you can see here that I haven't tied off my yarn and if you have, if you've tied off on the first one so that you could make the second sleeve, um, you can just join in new yarn. It's not a big deal. But what we're going to be doing is just slip stitching down the sleeve um, exactly the same way that we joined our front panels to our back panel. So using our hook, you just want to insert it into both of the panels and then yarn over, pull through both panels and through the loop on your hook. So we're just going to do this all the way down. And it's not too important where you're inserting your hook because again, you're working into the sides of the rows. The only thing that you want to make sure is that you are working evenly. So it might be best to add some stitch markers here and you can just place them evenly across. Make sure that your rows are lining up correctly. So like with row three and row three, you'll want to make sure that they're lined up evenly so that when it's um, all sewn together, it won't look lopsided or crooked. So you just want to make sure that the rows are lined up evenly. And then you're just going to do this all the way down, just slip stitching from the cuff all the way to the underarm. And then once you reach the underarm area, you can just continue right on down and slip stitch all the way down um, the sides of your cardigan, working the, side, um, the sides of the panels all the way until you reach the hem. Okay, so I've seamed all the way down my sleeve and all the way down the side of my cardigan and now we're just going to tie off. So you can just yarn over, pull through, and then cut your yarn and just pull it all the way through. And then again, we're going to have to repeat the same thing on the other side. So you should have your other sleeve already made, ready and waiting for you. And you're just going to do the same thing. You're just going to fold it in half and then slip stitch from the cuff to the underarm and the underarm down um, to the bottom hem. If you haven't made your second sleeve yet, now is the time to go do that. And then you can just follow along with the same process that we did before and um, go ahead and seam it all together. Okay, so now we'll be doing the trim portion of the cardigan. So all you need to do is take your yarn and then you can just make a slip knot and place the yarn on the hook. And then to get started, you'll want to have your cardigan correct side out. So the seams are now on the inside and your cardigan is laying in front of you correct side out. And then the bottom left corner here at the front opening of the cardigan, you can just insert your hook. And then we're just going to slip stitch to join. So just yarn over your hook and then just pull it through and pull it through the loop on your hook. 
and then you can chain one and then now all we will be doing is half double crochet stitches up the side of our cardigan so these are going to be worked into the side rows of the cardigan so there's not an actual stitch that you need to be working into you can just play around with it and insert wherever it is that it's comfortable for you to put your hook it's not too important you just want to make sure that you're trying to evenly space the half double crochet stitches out you don't want to do too many because then the front opening of your cardigan will look wavy um, but you don't want to do too little so that there's big gaps so just try and evenly space it and you're going to do half double crochet stitches all the way up the side and then when you reach the back neckline you are going to be working a half double crochet stitch into each of those stitches across and then you can just continue on and work your stitches all the way down the second front flap and then once you reach the corner you can just go ahead and tie off and that completes the trim so you can see I've worked all the way up across the neckline here and all the way down gives a nice smooth finished look and then you can just yarn over pull through and cut your yarn to complete and now we'll be making the pockets so to make the pockets you can go ahead and begin with the slip knot and then just insert your hook and pull tight and for the pockets you'll need to make two of these and to begin we'll be chaining 13. so just yarn over and pull through for a total of 13 times so 13 chains and for row one you will just be working one half double crochet into that second chain from the hook and in each chain across so once you have 13 chains you can insert your hook into the second chain from the hook and then work your half double crochet and then work one half double crochet in each remaining stitch across until you get to the end of the row you should have a total of 12 half double crochet and that completes row one and then you're just going to chain one turn your work and work one half double crochet stitch in each across and at the end of row two again you will have 12 half double crochet and then you can repeat row two one more time for a total of three rows and 12 half double crochet okay so for row four go ahead and chain one and then you can just work one half double crochet into each stitch across until you have two stitches remaining so work a total of 10 half double crochet and then we're going to do a decrease with those last two stitches Now work your decrease, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all loops on your hook, and that decreases our stitch, and then chain one and turn. So you should have 11 half double crochet, and now for row five, we're going to work one more decrease in the beginning to start us off, so in those first two stitches, work a decrease. So we just half double crocheted two together and then you'll just work a normal half double crochet stitch in each remaining stitch across so your decrease and then one half double crochet in all the remaining stitches and at the end of this row you should have a total of 10 half double crochet Then just go ahead and chain one and turn your work to start row six and row six is just going to be a repeat of row four so work one half double crochet in each stitch across and then when you reach the last two stitches we'll be doing another decrease Okay, so we're at our last two stitches so work the half double crochet two together to finish off the row 
and you should have a total of nine half double crochet for this row and then just chain one and turn and then again we'll be doing another decrease so work the first two stitches into a half double crochet two together and then finish off the row with one half double crochet in each remaining stitch and this is row seven and at the end of row seven you should have a total of eight half double crochet made Okay, then just chain one and turn your work and now this starts off row eight and we'll just be doing the same exact thing again chain one work one half double crochet in each stitch across until you have two stitches remaining and then work a decrease with those last two stitches so decrease those last two stitches you should have a total of seven half double crochet at the end of this row and then just chain one and turn your work and then we will repeat row five which is just working a half double crochet two together so decrease those first two stitches and then just work one half double crochet into each remaining stitch across and at the end of row nine you should have a total of six half double crochet And then you can just yarn over and pull through and tie off your yarn. Um, you'll want to make sure that you cut off enough yarn so that you can use that tail to sew the pocket to the front of your sweater. So leave a decent length and then go ahead and just repeat that same thing again. So you'll want to make a second pocket. So you can see here I'm pulling out enough yarn extra amount so that I can know that I'll have enough to sew it to the front of my sweater. And then you can just pull it all the way through to tie off and then just go ahead and go back and make a second pocket exactly the same. Okay, so after you have both pockets made, we're just going to sew them to the front of the cardigan. So you just want to make sure that the edge of the pocket is lined up with the edge of the cardigan and the bottom edge is lined up with the bottom and then the corners are just laying on top of each other. Um, my cardigan is correct side out, so just make sure your cardigan is the right side out. And then we're going to just use a yarn needle and sew the length of the pocket to the cardigan so I'll show you guys how to do that so you're just going to take your yarn needle and from the top down insert it through the cardigan and pull the tail all the way through and then you can go the other direction and go through the pocket portion Pull it all the way through and then again take your needle and go through just the cardigan panel insert your needle down pull through and you're just going to repeat this all the way down so we're just stitching it together and if you have a different method or way of sewing that you prefer to do it that is perfectly fine as long as you get it sewn onto the cardigan so again then you're just working your needle up through the pocket panel So just continue sewing until you reach the corner of the pocket in the cardigan and then just continue on. You can rotate your work and keep working along the bottom of the pocket in the cardigan. And then you will also want to sew the edge of the pocket, the left side edge of the pocket right before our decrease area. You'll also want to sew that to the cardigan. And then I will show you guys how to bring your yarn up and sew the top. So sew there as well. And then the decrease rows where it is slanted, do not sew that part because that's the opening of our pocket. So I've sewn down and across and back up this little portion. And now we have to sew the top shut, but we don't want to sew this little um, 
slanted area so what I like to do instead of having to cut and rejoin my yarn and have more ends to weave in I'm just going to thread my yarn through the pocket panel till I reach up to that corner so you can see here I'm just going to pull the yarn through so I'm just pulling the tail through and you'll, you won't be able to see this since the yarn is so fuzzy so don't worry about that but you can just thread it up until you reach that um, last row of the pocket at the corner and then we can just finish sewing as we have been. So I'm up at the top corner. You'll just want to make sure everything is lined up so that your pockets aren't crooked. And then you can just go ahead and finish sewing along the top last row of the pocket all the way until you reach um, the outer corner where you began your sewing. Once you have the first pocket sewn on, you'll want to repeat the same exact process with the second pocket on the other side. And then once that is complete, all you need to do is weave in the ends of your yarn. So again, I'm just using this yarn needle and then I'll show you guys an example of how to weave in the ends. You'll want to make sure that you're weaving it through on the inside just to help um, hide the yarn a little bit better. So I'm just pulling it through. And then I'll go back down the opposite direction. And you can just do this two or three times until you are comfortable with how secure the yarn is. And then you can just cut your yarn and then you'll just want to do this with all the tails that you have. And that completes the sweater. I hope you guys liked this pattern. I love sharing it with you. Thank you so much for following along and I'll see you guys next time.